AMD is generally considered a lot more friendly towards FOSS than NVIDIA is. But even so, it's not like everything AMD does is going to be open, even when we're talking about things like their GPUs. Most notably, you have things like the AMD Pro drivers required for their OpenCL implementation. But recently, AMD decided to open up a really useful piece of their developer tooling, the Radeon Ray Tracing Analyzer, or RRA for short. Now, this project was originally announced all the way back in July of 2022, being worked on by AMD's GPU Open. This is the part of AMD that works on things like FSR, FSR2, and the AMD Radeon Developer Tool Suite, a bunch of really cool things that AMD does. But the reason why we're talking about this now, as opposed to back in July when it was first made, is back then, it wasn't actually open. The GitHub did exist, but the GitHub wasn't very useful. So it had some documentation, it had a readme, and the documentation did make mention of the MIT license, but there was no code to be seen whatsoever. So either the project is MIT, and then it's like a closed package, a closed project, which some things do, but for those ones, I don't really know why GitHub exists in the first place, or the other thing, is it supposed to be open, but for one reason or another, it isn't right now. So people waited and waited and waited, and eventually we got to where we are now. So this right here is the repo for the Radeon Ray Tracing Analyzer. And as we can see, it is licensed under the MIT license. You can go check out the source code and see all the fun stuff that it's going to be doing. But you might be wondering what it actually does. You might be able to guess by the name, but the Radeon Ray Tracing Analyzer, otherwise known as RRA, is a tool designed to help improve the ray tracing performance of AMD's GPUs that support ray tracing. Now, support is a very um, strong word. I would say struggle to hell and back. AMD can go, hey, look, guys, we have 100% better performance this generation. And everyone's like, yeah, that makes sense. Because before, it was pretty terrible. The tool thus far focuses on the visualization of acceleration structures, which consist of bounding volume hierarchies. Game developers are responsible for creating the acceleration structures and so need a method of visualizing the acceleration structures and how they can affect performance. RRA allows the developer to visualize the bounding box hierarchies and related scene geometries via a standard rasterizer renderer or using a traversal, which I'm guessing is supposed to be traversal, counter view, which will quickly highlight areas of concern. Once identified, the developer can revisit their BVH generation strategy to reduce performance bottlenecks. Basically, the TLDR is it's used for analyzing your ray tracing performance, which should be pretty obvious by the name. Now, due to Linux not supporting DirectX 12, if you're running this under Linux, it's obviously not going to be able to test that, but it is going to work just fine through Vulkan. But there was a little bit of an issue if you try to run this back when it was first announced. It would work just fine on AMD's Linux drivers, but not through the open drivers, only through the closed drivers. But the Mesa developers have been doing a lot of really good work, and as of September, it now works through the RADV drivers and also the closed drivers as well. Now, while it does seem really strange and really weird that a group called GPU Open has certain things that are not currently open, if you look at the way they develop a lot of their other projects, it seems to basically be standard practice, and it kinda does make sense. It got opened with the 1.0 release. And if you look at things like FSR2, like the HDR mapper, like pretty much anything else in here, the repo didn't exist or the source code didn't exist in the repo until that first stable release. The only difference is with a lot of these things, they just didn't have the repo in the first place or just weren't announced, so no one questioned it. But considering it's now an open project that anybody can go and look at, anybody can go and fork and 
anybody can go and commit to, theoretically, you may be wondering how the development model is actually going to function. Now, I can't really say for sure on this specific repo. Currently, it only has six commits, so it's hard to really say here. But what we can look at is some of the other repos that GPU Open runs. Say, for example, like their FSR2 repo or like their HDR mapper, or their GPU profiler. All of these things basically have the same sort of development model. They all function very similar to the way that NVIDIA's open kernel module is developed. Basically, we accept issues, we accept pull requests, and these are going to cover, you know, corners that maybe we as the developers happen to miss or just don't have time to deal with, or in the case of issues, maybe bug reports that just didn't show up in our testing environment. But the primary development isn't done publicly. Say, for example, with uh, the FSR2 here. The commits we have here, these are the entire commits. There's not like another branch here where the development is actually being done on. The only commits that are being made are updating to the newest version. Now, some of these do have the occasional different commit, like updating various files, but you're not seeing, you know, major development being done here. It's mainly updating the documentation. So pretty much every commit is going to be this big dump of code whenever that code is ready to release. I'm not particularly a big fan of this model. I like the open projects to be developed in an open way as well, where you can see each of the individual things being done, and if maybe there are like commits you wanna cherry pick, then you can very easily go and do that. But I think having open code is much better than not having open code. I would like the open development as well, but it isn't really required. Now, I briefly mentioned this before, but AMD's real-time ray tracing implementation seriously does lag behind what NVIDIA is doing. And even though this isn't some direct driver-related project that is going to instantly improve the performance of ray tracing on these RDNA 2 and now these new RDNA 3 cards, it is still incredibly important for getting developers to actually make good high quality games because it doesn't really matter how good the hardware or how good the drivers are going to be if the developers don't have the tooling to properly make use of this hardware it doesn't really matter so as this tooling does improve and as it and as it gets easier for developers to actually make good ray tracing scenes that are actually efficient we are going to see better ray tracing on these amd cards it's not like you can take just a regular scene with baked in light, throw in some rays, and then be good to go. So this tool isn't going to be something that the regular consumer relies on. It is literally part of the developer tool suite. But as this tool gets better and better, it is going to help slowly close the gap. Now, we do need better ray tracing support at the hardware and driver level, but that's a whole separate problem. And I hope that as the generations go on and on and on, the gap does begin to close and Team Red actually can put up a fight in this field. Hopefully they'll also catch up in the content creation space, and then AMD can go back to being an actual choice between NVIDIA. Not NVIDIA is just objectively better on Windows, but if NVIDIA keeps pricing the way they do, maybe they don't really need to do much to actually compete. But let me know your thoughts. Do you care at all about developer tooling? Maybe you're a game developer yourself. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, center, or bearer pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Opton Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out. <laughs>